This video is the second on state space behaviours and considers the role of eigenvalues. The first video demonstrated that you can solve x dot equals ax by finding a state transition matrix phi of t. And we showed that one possible way of finding phi of t was using Laplace methods. So phi of t was defined as the inverse Laplace of si minus a inverse. But this was clearly fairly tedious. This video looks at an alternative derivation which uses similarity transforms and eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions. Now that's not to say that this is numerically any easier, but it does offer alternative insights which can be useful. An interim summary that we got from the previous video is that we expect the modes of behaviour of a state space model to be determined by the eigenvalues of the A matrix. And we also said we're not going to get sidetracked by special cases with pole zero cancellations, repeated poles and so on. So the state transition matrix was given as this, the inverse Laplace SI minus A inverse. And clearly this show that the poles come from the determinant of SI minus A, which is the same calculation you use to get the eigenvalues of A. Now, let's start with a simple analogy to see if this helps. If we take a first order case, here it is, x dot equals ax, then we know the solution can be written as x of t equals e to the at x of 0. And what we'd like to do is say, well, can we write an analogous solution for a state space model? So if we have x dot equals capital AX, so x is now a vector, can we not write an analogous expression of this form, x of t equals e to the at x of 0? Well, the answer is that yes, we can. But of course, the puzzle is, what do we mean by e to the at? because A is now a matrix. So we need to be clear on how we're defining this expression. Now from the previous video, we know that we can solve for the state transition matrix phi of t as follows. Phi of t is inverse Laplace SI minus A inverse. So you could say, well simplistically then, I can say that the E to the AT equals phi of t. So one possible definition of e to the at is this phi of t. Now, OK, that works, but it doesn't necessarily give us a lot of insight and it doesn't give us a different way of making this computation. Let's have a look at an alternative insight. If we ignore the system input again, so we're just going to look at the equation x dot equals a ax and we're going to assume that we can write the solution as e to the at x of 0. This definition accords well with the rules of differentiation of exponentials of scalars. So what we're saying is if I assume that the derivative of e to the at is a e to the at then clearly this means the solution I've written satisfies that equation. That should be by inspection. Now, if you can prove this, then you're done. And you'll find that typical textbooks use Maclaurin expansions to do this. But I don't want to waste your time with all of what I might call the rigor that's behind this, because I think for most students, this rigor's not required. It's more That would be more of an advanced course. And here we want to get on with the basics. So the definition of e to the at, where it exists, and I'm going to restrict myself to distinct eigenvalues, it may be easier to use an eigenvalue, eigenvector decomposition to explain what we mean by e to the at. So here we go. I've got x dot equals ax, and I'm going to use the eigenvalue, eigenvector decomposition. So there it is, a equals w lambda v. So now, if I define a new vector z such that x equals wz, or equivalently z equals vx, I can substitute that into the expression above, and I will get this, z dot equals v a w z. Now the advantage of doing that is that clearly, because v and w um, are the eigenvectors, left eigenvectors, you're going to end up with z dot equals lambda z, where lambda 
is diagonal. And because lambda is diagonal, I can write an expression like this by inspection. Z equals e to the lambda t z0. Because it's diagonal, I can treat each component of lambda separately, and e to the lambda t becomes meaningful, and we'll show that on the next slide. And having a solve for z, I can now sub solve for x using the expression I've got here, x equals wz. So there we get x equals w e to the lambda t v x of 0. Now what's the nice thing here is we have an expression. e to the at is given by w e to the lambda t v. And the key question is, can I write e to the lambda t by inspection? And remember, e to the lambda t is what I've used to solve this expression here, which is a set of decoupled or diagonal equations. So if we note that this lambda is diagonal, then it should be fairly straightforward to show that e to the lambda t must be a diagonal matrix of e to the lambda 1t all the way down to e to the lambda nt. And that follows because we can show by inspection zi of t equals e to the lambda i of t zi of 0. And that will follow directly from the CSO case. And therefore, we've now got this expression. What we want to do is, is verify that ddt of e to the at does give me what I wanted, which was a e to the at. And again, we're going to use the eigenvalue eigenvector expression to do that. So first of all, we're going to replace e to the at by w e to the lambda t v. And you notice there's only t's in the exponential term. So I've taken the w outside the v outside. I recognize that e to the lambda t is diagonal, so I can just differentiate the diagonal terms. And there you see the derivative of the diagonal terms. I get lambda 1 e to the lambda 1t all the way down to lambda n e to the lambda n t. Now, here comes the next trick. You'll notice that this matrix in here, perhaps I should use red, this matrix in here can be written as this, lambda times e to the lambda t. Lambda is diagonal, e to the lambda t is diagonal, so I can separate out this lambda times e to the lambda t as one diagonal matrix times another diagonal matrix. So the result, which is d dt of e to the at, can now be written as w lambda e to the lambda t v. And now the final trick is to add in a vw in the middle. So you'll see I've taken that VW and I've inserted it in there, in between those two. And the reason I've done that is because now you can see that my expression can be separated out into two terms. A term which is the original A matrix and the one I'm looking for. And so you've now proved that if you do this diagonalization and you define e to the at as w e to the lambda tv, then the derivative result you want works. So we've shown that this result works if you use the eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition to define e to the at. So what's our result? The state transition matrix phi of t can be written as w e to the lambda t v. And so when you see somebody write e to the a t, there are two things that go through your mind, apart from, OK, this is the state transition matrix. I can solve it as w e to the lambda t v, or I can solve it using the inverse Laplace of s i minus a inverse. They're two different but equivalent methods. Now. The reason that we've emphasized this so much is that this second definition given in this video, this one here, using the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, gives you much more information as to what's going on in the solution. So a summary. The behaviors of a state space system are governed by the eigenvalues of the A matrix. And 
you can find a state transition matrix e to the at and what we've shown is that if you've got distinct eigenvalues e to the at can be written as this a matrix of the eigenvectors w times a diagonal matrix e to the lambda t where lambda has the eigenvalues multiplied by the right eigenvectors v